So something pretty frequently as a systems administrator is parsing logs, right? And parsing logs can sometimes be a bit of a nightmare. I've got a log file on my demo system here. Just called error log. And this is legitimately the error log from one of my websites. If we just look at it, we can see that it's pretty lengthy. This is just like today's log. We can pipe it through a word count dash L tells how many lines it is. There's almost 1500 lines in this thing. Hard to just read through, right? Also, you see that that's scrolled off the screen. There's a nice tool called less. I forget if you had touched on this already, Scott, but if we just do less on the error log. It'll let us scroll through it, you know, kind of line by line here. There's a lot of errors that look like this file not found error. Let me just find an example of one. Here we go. No such file or directory, right? Obviously, no such file or directory just means that someone's probably trying to crawl the website, looking for files that should exist but don't, or they think might exist. Sometimes that's indicative of a problem. Sometimes it's somebody trying to poke around where they're not supposed to. Sometimes it's just search engines doing their thing, right? So I'm going to use, I'm going to kind of hone in on this particular error and give you some tricks on how you can just like pull out, say, who made the request, right? Because you can see each line it tells me what file, it tells me what website they accessed, and it gives me the IP address of the requester, which is in here somewhere. A lot of times you're, what you're going to want to look for is you see how there's these numbers here. Sometimes these are error numbers from whatever generated this. And you can just grep for the error number instead of having to grep for a text string, which is what I'm about to do. In this case, the error number is not always the same. So what we're going to do is I've got a crazy thing here. I'm going to paste in and tell you what's going on here. We're going to use grep. We're going to look for this no such file or directory error message that we see all over the error logs. And we're going to pipe it back into grep. And we're going to tell it to look for an expression and it's going to use this crazy regex. Now, if you're not familiar with regular expressions, or even if you are familiar with regular expressions and you don't fully understand what that is, I'm going to tell you what it is. And I'm going to tell you why we're not going to delve into the regular expression. What this is doing is it's looking for IP addresses, right? Or numbers that are formatted like IP addresses, because it doesn't know if it's really an IP address or not. So we're going to throw that in there. And you can see, sure enough, it's got all the IP addresses, right? that were from that log that matched that text string. But it's still not terribly useful because you see a bunch of these are repeated, right? And it might be really handy to try to parse out someone who might be a bad actor to see how many occurrences of the address we have. Just give me a second here. Copy and paste. All right, so we're going to add two things that we're going to continue to chain our output through. First, we're going to sort it. And the reason we're sorting it is because the next thing we're going to pipe through, which is unique, which looks for unique flags, needs them all kind of in blocks, right? So it would group, say, this block of IP addresses, but not, it, it wouldn't then other instances of that IP address also block in, right? So you have to sort it first. So we're just putting the same thing through sort. Here it is. Now it's grouped all the IP addresses together. This 219 address is all in one block. This 192 address is all in one block. This 46 address is all in one block. And now if we clear it again and add in unique, what it would do is just deduplicate it, right? You can see now all those IPs that were duplicated are just single lists now. If we add the dash C option, this tells us how many occurrences of each address showed up. Right, and you can see this one's here 14 times. This one's here 27 times, right? But this list still isn't great because look here, 97, which might be indicative of a problem, is way up here, like off the top of my screen. I'd have to then parse through and see what's what. So we're going to now add in sort again, which sounds repetitive, but we're using sort again for a different purpose. We're gonna sort it again with the dash n option that Scott used earlier, except I'm not gonna reverse it because I want the big ones to show up at the bottom because that's what's gonna be on the screen. So sort dash n tells it to sort it numerically. If I added the dash r, then the big ones would be at the top. In this case, they're gonna be at the bottom and you can see my 97 is all the way at the bottom. So that one shows up right there in front of me, which is helpful. And I can also see that a bunch of ones, then some twos and threes, but, you know, these might be either someone trying to beat up my site, try to find stuff they're not supposed to, or it might just be Google, you know, ind indexing my site and looking for stuff that it knows might be there. It wants to see if they are. 